I have a riddle for you, Bird Glamour fans. What's black and red and loves mussels all over? I'll give you a hint. The mussels that we're talking about are the marine mollusk, not the brrr type of mussel. In this episode of Bird Glamour, we're going to explore the glamorous life of a really interesting little marine shorebird called the black oyster catcher. Black oyster catchers are a fairly easy marine shorebird to identify. As their name suggests, they're black all over, with the exception of three parts. Their pinkish-orange legs, their long red bill, and a very prominent red eye ring, which really stands out against the black backdrop of the head of the oyster catcher. So that's the look that we're going to be applying today. And then, if we're lucky, we're going to go visit some black oyster catcher habitat and maybe see these little guys in action. To start with the black oyster catcher look, I've prepped my face. I've applied a bright red lipstick, and it's CoverGirl's Outlast. And the color is, well, it's a number, 920. So very, very vibrant, bright red. And that's exactly what we need for the oyster catcher look. So to get started, this is a really simple look to apply because there's basically two colors that we have to worry about, black and red. So to start, I will apply the black base and I'm using a matte eyeshadow from Sephora. And it's a Sephora Colorful Series, number 304 in black lace. And I will be using my favorite small fluffy brush to apply this black eyeshadow basically all over my eyelid and a very thin lining underneath. Now I think that the oyster catchers are an interesting bird for a lot of reasons. One is that they are a marine shorebird, so that's cool. I love shorebirds. Second, their name is really cool. Now, black oyster catchers are part of a family of birds called the Hematopodidae. Now, this fancy scientific name basically encompasses all of the 12 species of the genus Hematopus, which is the group that contains all of the oyster catchers. Now, the name, when we break it down into its Greek roots, is pretty cool. Hamia is Greek for blood. Pus, or podidae, or anything that has pod in the name, is actually Greek for foot. So, anytime you say the oyster catcher's scientific name, you are basically calling it by its Greek name of Bloodfoot, which, come on, that's really, really cool. Oyster catchers likely get this name from the color of their legs. Their legs are usually a deep pink color or a very vibrant red-orange, which I guess kind of makes it look like they've been walking around in blood. Kind of a pretty metal bird. Now, the best place to see black oyster catchers is anywhere along the Pacific coast or the west coast. Uh, they have a permanent range all the way from up north in Alaska down to Baja, California. And they hang out in this range pretty much year-round. They do not migrate far from their coastline. So black oyster catchers will migrate short distances up and down the Pacific coast, but they pretty much stay on the coast all year. So black oyster catchers love the rocky shorelines as opposed to the sandy beaches that us humans like to visit. And along these rocky gravelly shorelines, the black oyster catcher is a top predator. So they go after marine invertebrates, like mollusks, so limpets, mussels, chitons, arthropods, 
and basically anything that they can get their little red beaks into. The black oyster catchers also like the rocky shorelines for breeding, and this is because a lot of rocky shorelines tend to be pretty common on very small islands on the west coast. These small islands are great for black oyster catchers because they tend to have a lower number of predators, which, you know, if you're a top predator along the shoreline, you don't want to be preyed along while you're trying to breed. The black oyster catchers will set up their nest above the high tide line. Both parents, the male and the female, will be involved in constructing the nest, which is a shallow little scrape in the ground. And then they'll line that scrape with little shells and small pebbles that they'll just kind of flick into place with their stout red beaks. Black oyster catchers are considered endemic to the Pacific coast. Because of this and because of their reliance on a healthy marine invertebrate population, black oyster catchers are considered an indicator species for the health of these rocky coastlines. So if the mussel and other invertebrate faunas are really healthy in these coastlines, if they're not being polluted to death, then black oyster catchers are going to be in the area feeding on these healthy mussels. So if you see a rocky coastline that has a healthy population of black oyster catchers, that's a really good indicator that that part of the coastline is pretty healthy, ecologically speaking. Now, because black oyster catchers are so dependent on the health of the rocky shorelines for their mussels and invertebrates that they eat, they are also very susceptible to being negatively impacted by pollutants on these rocky coastlines. So oil spills, human disturbances, and anything that's going to pollute the ecosystem of the rocky coastline, that's going to have a negative impact on black oyster catcher populations. The matte black of the black oyster catcher is applied on my upper and my lower lids. I took a little bit of a break to clean up some of the flaky black powder that ended up on my cheeks with a makeup wipe. Now I'm going to apply the bright red eye ring of the black oyster catcher. Now since I'm going to be applying a lighter color over a darker color, I prefer to use a cream or a liquid shadow to do this. And for the bright red, I'm going to be using Makeup Forever's Aqua Color Paint. And the color is M72, or as I call it, bright red. And I'll be using a stiff angled brush to apply the red eye ring on my upper lashes and on my lower lashes. Here is the completed black oyster catcher look. I am ready to go share a plate of steamed mussels with the local black oyster catchers. So let's go visit some black oyster catcher habitat and see if we can catch them in the act of looking for some mussels. Black oyster catchers are a species of least concern. However, there are estimated to be only 11,000 individual black oyster catchers in the entire global population. British Columbia may be home to more than 20% of the global population of black oyster catchers. Now let's go see some real oyster catchers in action.
Thanks for joining me in exploring the life of the black oyster catcher. If you have a favorite shorebird, a marine shorebird, or an inland shorebird that you would like to see glamoured, let me know in the comments section below. See you next time and thanks for watching.